Hi, my name is Ken and I'm in recovery. Well, so are you. So are we all. 2021 is the year of the big take back, the year of the recovery. So I'm going to spend a few minutes going through some of the key values and the psychology of recovery. First of all, I want to tell you a little story. I was in a pharmacy the other day queuing up behind this little eight-year-old kid and he said to his mom, Mom, when will all this be over? And I, oh, my heart melted. I thought, oh, the poor little guy worried about society, worried about the pandemic. And his mum turned to him and said, look, as soon as I get these, we'll go back and we'll play it then. Turned out he was waiting for his mum to finish her groceries or her pharmacy purchase so he could go back and play Minecraft. <laughs> and there I was projecting my, my sense of, oh my God, the global pandemic on this poor eight-year-old kid. All he wanted to do was get back to his Xbox. But it did set me thinking about the recovery. I mean, we all are thinking that right now. When will all this be over for our brands, for our businesses, for ourselves, for our own lives, for our families, for our relationships? And so I thought it would be a good idea to talk a little about the psychology of recovery. And first of all, it's important to know that recovery, whether it's addiction or trauma, recovery is not an outcome. It's a journey. And anyone who understands how the 12-step processes work and anything to do with the psychology of of, of you know, psychotherapy, and you know that it's a journey and not an outcome. It's quite a personal journey, actually. Recovery is a very personal journey, and we're all in recovery right now. The entire society is in recovery, every business, every industry, every every individual. And so I think it's a really important thing to understand and give some time to, to appreciating, I suppose, the values of that recovery and see can we reflect on them. Now, there's a really good model that we're going to use here, a five uh, kind of pillar model developed by a woman called Dr. Mary Leamy. And she looked at all the academic studies to do with recovery and has pulled a few threads from them all and woven it into this CHIME model, C-H-I-M-E. And it stands for connectedness, hope, identity, meaning and purpose and empowerment. Those five values, if you can reflect those back to your customers right now and even understand what they mean for you yourself, you're going to have a better appreciation of this recovery. So let's go through them one by one. Firstly, connection. What does connection mean? Well, this, it's psychological, it's physiological, it's spiritual. So for instance, think about the physiological need for connection, for physical intimacy. Loads of research studies have shown us that the people who have better physical connection to their partners, they live longer, they're healthier, it's better for stress and anxiety and depression, for chronic pain, for cardiovascular, having sex regularly is good for you. The, to take that away with you. That's your homework for tonight. So go to your partner. I was watching a, a blog video and he tells me that we have to have sex tonight. And so, but it doesn't have to be sex, of course, because physical intimacy is to do with massage, hand holding, even physical proximity to other people. It's good for you, it's good for the body. And of course, we've had a huge absence of that physical intimacy. So actually, intimacy is going to be a kind of a sub value for this 2021 year. But that's, the phys that's physical connection. What about psychological, the kind of, you know, friendships? Again, loads of research shows us that those who have better friendships, better community ties and spend more time in, in social engagement, they also live longer. Uh, they're healthier mentally, physically, they achieve more. And that's what we, we know that it's good for your mental health to have. And, and of course, the opposite is also true. You know, isolation, social isolation is, has negative impacts on health, both mentally and physically. And even spirituality. I mean, from a spiritual point of view, science argues that we're all individuals. I'm made up here of a cluster, an amalgamation of atoms, and I'm separate to you. But actually, of course, the Buddhist faith would say, well, that's not true. We're all interconnected. Just like every wave looks to be independent, they're all part of the one ocean. And I think connection, where, you know, we, we need to connect better to each other. And, and coming out of, the, out of 2021, the recovery is all going to be about connection. So connection is a really strong value for you to resonate with your customers. And loads of people uh, have done this already, even in the past year. Look at what KLM did with their Holland at Home series, where, yes, you couldn't fly to the Netherlands, so they took the Netherlands into your home to you. Welcome to the Dutch Museum home to the Dutch masters and some of the greatest pieces of art in the history of the Netherlands. Please put on your headphones for the full AT experience. Sit back and relax. Now is the time for you to sit back and think about what can we do in terms of connection? How can we build better connections with our customer in 2021? Because the customer themselves are yearning for those connections. So that's the C of the Chime model. What about the H, the hope? H, the hope part is, let me make a distinction between hope wishes and dreams. Wishing and dreams are kind of, it's escapism if you like, it's a, it's a I hope. But that kind of hope isn't realistic. Where actually the definition of real hope is having a belief in the outcome or, the, or, or, or yourself, regardless of the circumstances. So regardless of what's happening, it's not as a whole maybe, but it's a hope that it will happen. So, I mean, Dvesky once said that to live without hope was to cease to live. It's a wonderful quote. You know, it's, it's in our human nature to want to hope. And so there's another great model developed by a psychologist called Charles Schneider, and he breaks hope into three pieces. There's the goals, 
there's agency and there's pathways. So goals, you know, what are your goals? What are you trying to achieve? And if they're too broad, break them down to micro goals. So you have to know what you want. And then the agency part he talks about is the motivation to achieve those goals. So it's, it's, it's your self-belief, your self-confidence. And maybe in others, your leaders around you, you as a leader, circumstances, you need to have a belief, an agency. It's like an optimism. And the last one is pathways. They are the roots to achieving those goals. So what are your ways you're going to achieve this? So let's say if you want to lose weight, it's January. That's your goal. Uh, do you have that self-belief and drive? And then if you, if you do, how are you going to do it? So you have to have pathways to reach the goals. And they're very successful people, by the way, who have high hope levels tend to have multiple pathways to achieve any particular goal. That's why they're successful. They always have an option. So have a think about how you can bring hope to the customers and consumers that you're serving today because hope is a really strong value for 2021. It'll resonate very, very well with everybody. In fact, I booked tickets to a Guns N' Roses concert for my 14-year-old son last year. It never happened, of course, 2020. And I just got an email the other day from their concert promoter saying it's going to happen this June. I'm thinking, really? Are you going to put tens of thousands of people in a mosh pit in sweaty proximity this June? I don't think so. That's one promoter who has a lot of hope right now. So that's connection and hope. The next one, the I, the identity. And this is kind of a spiritual value, if you like. This is the sense of self. Who am I? And particularly post-trauma, people on recovery, who am I now? And who am I not? And so ask yourself the question, even you can ask this individually of yourself. Who, who are you now post-pandemic? Who is the new you? Who do you want to be? And bring that into your business. What is the business about? You know, who, who are we going to be? So as individuals, the whole society is going to go through a recalibration now of self-identity. In the past, we tend to self-identify by being a sports player or a fan, uh, maybe by going shopping, uh, maybe by being particularly religious. You might maybe go to the mosque or the church and, and express yourself, your self-identity in those things. And we haven't been able to do those things for so long now. So you're going to channel your desires through brands and businesses to self-identify. And this is the opportunity, of course, for every brand and business watching here. How can we do things to help the consumer self-identify, to get that sense of self back? And if you can do that, and you can channel your their desires through your brand or business, then that is a huge opportunity for you. In, in fact, there's a wonderful example of Getty Museum allowing people to identify as others during the pandemic. They launched this, uh, you know, mimic the artistry, uh, and you can see it on the screen here. I love these, with great, great sense of fun and excitement. So the fourth value then, so we've done connection, we've done hope, we've done identity, is meaning and purpose. And so this is kind of a philosophical one. If identity is about spirituality, this one is about philosophy. What is it all about? Life, you, what's it all about? And so consumers are asking themselves that question. Brands and businesses should be asking themselves that question. Why do we exist? It's not for money. So beyond money, why do we exist? What's the point of the business? And so for some people, this will be about, you know, what do you want for the next few years? But some people want to travel, the big global vacation. Some people want to move house. People want to go to music festivals. They want to queue for things, not supermarkets. <laughs> they want to queue to get in somewhere and, and, and enjoy themselves and have physical experiences. And so think about your brand purpose. As individuals will be thinking about their own meaning and purpose, you need to think about your brand business and purpose and try and bring your brand purpose to the market in a way that will resonate with customers and, and become, again, that brand tribal, brand advocacy. You know, you want those brand fans. And the last one I want to talk about of the CHIME model is E for empowerment. And empowerment is that personal responsibility for recovery, that idea that look, we've been told for the last you know, 12 months to keep two metres apart, to, to not have people in your home. Um, to not travel, to, you know, we've been told a lot of not things. Where was our New Year's Eve? Where was our Christmas? And, and so people now feel, as individuals and society, they want to take it back. This is the big take back. This is, I want my life back. I want, and this is the empowerment feeling. And this, this value I cannot stress enough is so powerful for 2021. So as a brand, you know, you need to say, you want it? We can help. And you need to package it up in that activation of desire. We can, you know, we can activate your desires through our product, through our service. Uh, and look at this example from Ryanair, <laughs> their jab and go. Some people, they got a lot of flack for this. I actually think it's great. They are empowering consumers to say, look, you want a holiday this Easter or summer? Get your vaccine, let's go. And so anything that you can deliver to your customers from a brand and business point of view to excite them around empowerment and control, remember that freedom and control, that yearning, that fear is really, really powerful. So those five values, connection, uh, hope, identity, meaning and purpose, and empowerment. If you can embed those into how you bring products and services to the market this year, you will have better customer experience, better connections, and you'll have a fantastic year of recovery. Uh, ultimately, what we need to do is we need to, you know, I suppose the recovery is a personal journey. And while recovery may be a personal journey, those with whom we travel that journey with will remain in our hearts forever. And you want to be with your customer as they go along that journey. I'm Ken Hughes, stay safe.